In the last lesson we learned that if we want to separate the components of a mixture which have boiling points that are quite close together, for example a mixture that contains ethanol and water, well because the boiling point of ethanol is 78 degrees Celsius and that is quite close to the boiling point of water which is 100 degrees Celsius, using this simple distillation setup that we have here we would not be able to obtain a pure sample of ethanol in our collection test tube. The reason for that is because some of the water will also evaporate when the mixture is heated and it will also pass down the condensing tube and will be collected in the test tube. So what you get here is still a mixture of ethanol and water but there will be a greater concentration of ethanol. Now if we want to get a pure sample of ethanol here then we have to use a different technique and this technique is called fractional distillation and so to do that we're going to modify our apparatus okay and our new apparatus is going to look like this so what we've done is we've replaced our ordinary round bottom flask with a, a new type of flask which has got a, a long neck and that neck is filled with either small glass rods or small glass beads. Okay? This is called a fractionating column and it's filled with these glass beads and so what will happen is the same as with simple distillation when we heat the mixture the liquid or the substance with the lowest boiling point will evaporate first so in this case that will be the ethanol. Okay so the ethanol vapour will slowly move up the fractionating column and as it does so it will start to condense on these glass beads so the glass beads cause the ethanol to condense. Now at the same time water from the mixture is also evaporating and so water vapour is also rising up the column but as the water vapour rises it transfers its heat to the ethanol which is just condensed and so causes the condensed ethanol to re-evaporate. So what this fractionating column does is it ensures that heat energy is always transferred to, to the substance with the lowest boiling point, in this case the ethanol. So it will only ever be the substance in the mixture with the lowest boiling point that ever reaches the top of the fractionating column. This will then pass down the condensing unit and will condense back into a liquid and be collected in the collecting test tube. Here cold water is continually flowing into and out of the vessel and that helps the water vapour to condense. Now the height of the fractionating column chosen depends upon the difference in boiling points between the two liquids present in the mixture. If this difference is very small then you will need a higher fractionating column. If the difference is larger then the height of the fractionating column can be less. So we can say larger difference, smaller column, smaller difference in boiling point, then higher column. 